हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू स्ट्रेटजिक मैनेजमेंट एज आई सजेस्टेड लास्ट टाइम दैट नाउ फॉर अराउंड सिक्स सेशंस वी विल लार्जली बी ट्रैवर्सिंग टूवर्ड्स implementation evaluation and monitoring of strategy and then some other interesting elements which are you know associated with strategy sustainable goals also i would be talking about them uh, you know th those kind of things as well because those are uh, very important for us to understand in today's realm and then i would be talking about a philosophical digression wherein i would suggest that let's stop predicting and and that is an important element which we have learned and expressed specially with with reference to covid-19 and then i would be concluding so i am just trying to build up the scenario that soon we would be reaching towards the culmination but here we start with an interesting and important element that is managing internal operations and that is specifically with re uh, reference to implementation of the strategy you know functional level implementation which i have been time again talking talking about that we are we are we are focused upon very specific strategic steps goals and functionalities and here i'm talking of internal operations let's see what is there in store for us so there are five managerial actions and and these are managerial actions and for this i'm referring to kellet thompson strickland and gamble crafting and executing strategy the quest for competitive advantage megro hill education so there are five managerial actions that advance the cause of good strategy execution first is allocating ample resources to execution critical value chain activities and here comes i have been talking about strategically managing value chains and developing value webs and ultimately strategically managing value webs in terms of conglomerates and we have talked about conglomerates earlier also so we have reached to that point and then managing the strategy we have talked about we have talked about policy planning corporate governance and corporate level strategy execution as well so all these you know things which are associated with management of strategy at large now again when when we talk of critical value chain activities that means functional level focus upon strategy implementation then second is instituting policies and procedures that facilitate strategy execution employing process management tools to drive continuous improvement in how value chain activities are performed and i would be elaborating all these five you know managerial actions slightly in detail installing information and operating systems that enable company personnel to carry out their strategic roles proficiently installing information and operating systems using rewards and incentives to promote better strategy execution and the achievement of strategic and financial targets last time we talked about compensation of the top executives as you know a governance mechanism and here we are talking of rewards and incentives to promote better strategy execution at functional level largely let's see all these five managerial actions one by one so when we talk about allocating resources to the strategy execution effort there are few aspects which we should be focusing upon one is early in the strategy implementation process managers must determine what resources in terms of funding people and so on will be required and how they should be distributed across the company's various organizational units very important thing you see many a times in today's era when we are talking of software industry for example wherein human capital is the most important thing and that is where the investments go in planning for building up human capital is the most important element and and many a times when you are you are going for aggressively enhancing your market space then definitely you have to look for larger talent many times you have to support the development of that talent and so on and we all understand this this includes carefully screening requests for more people yes and new facilities and equipment approving those that will contribute to the strategy execution effort and turning down those that don't very tedious process today people are resorting to several kinds of techniques in this people are resorting to you know software people are resorting to you know judgmental uh, levels there are experts there are agencies involved in that and so on now a company's ability to marshal the resources needed to support new strategic initiatives has a major impact on the strategy execution process too little funding 
and an insufficiency of other types of resources slow progress and impede the efforts of organizational units to execute their pieces of strategic plan proficiently and make them vulnerable also and we have talked about when you know takeovers happen many times so but but here we are focused upon strategy execution not the vulnerability of whole of the organization as such too much funding and an over abundance of other resources waste organizational resources and reduce financial performance at large did i talk about joss polymers earlier there such kind of examples do happen the funding requirements of good strategy execution must drive how capital allocations are made and the size of each unit's operating budget rationality in almost everything many companies utilize you know peer endorsement for example if i am a functional manager and i want to purchase uh, you know budget around my operations so i get peer endorsement from different managerial groups or managers or uh, within my division and outside also i go to them and try to get the endorsement that am i thinking right and then i go up in the hierarchy or if there is hierarchy uh, and tell them that this is my budget requirement otherwise i straight away go to the finance and ask for those kind of things so underfunding organizational units and activities pivotal to the strategy impedes successful strategy implementation an understandable fact so a change in strategy nearly always calls for budget relocations and resource shifting previously important units with a lesser role in the new strategy may need downsizing units that now have a bigger strategic role may need more people new equipment additional facilities and above average increases in their operating budgets also but here can we create a human resource which can be shifted from this side to that side you know multifaceted talent or, or you know high levels of talent wherein you know uh, different kinds of uh, skills are there with uh, every person and they have uh, you know we can maneuver one uh, kind of a unit to the other unit and so on so and, and uh, because uh, this largely refers to the period of uh, 2018 as far as the publication of book goes and uh, authors have utilized slightly earlier examples so this is example from 2014 when google did something which is very relevant for uh, for us to understand because google now is much larger as compared to when it was in 2014 but what did they do so google's strong support of r&d activities helped it to grow to a taller 350 billion now they are much larger billion giant in a, in just 16 years it was named the world's most innovative company by fast company magazine in 2014 for innovation such as google glass wearable computers self driving automobiles and shopping express and experimental same day delivery service from stores such as whole foods target and office depot all the few of the activities google has extracted out of those kind of activities which they were doing very successfully at that time but that is again a part of strategy or strategic choice in 2013 however google decided to kill its 20% time policy which allowed its staff to work on side projects of their choice one day a week you see somehow these things have to be thought about very carefully and this may help in disruptive innovation basically so while this program gave rise to many innovations such as gmail and adsense a big contributor to google's revenues it also meant that fewer resources were available to projects that were deemed closer to the core of google's mission google like organizations which have come a far way in in their development and in contribution towards as far as the whole global scenario goes they have been extremely innovative and and uh, when 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 we talk of managing internal operations they have been focusing upon allocating resources to the strategy execution with with lots of diligence now second point is instituting policies and procedures that facilitate strategy execution and that is uh, you know that is also very interesting and then let's see how it happens so a company's policies and procedures can either support or hinder good strategy execution any time a company moves to put new strategy elements in place or improve its strategy execution capabilities some changes in work practices are usually needed some changes in work practices are usually needed and that is what we are talking about when when we say instituting policies and procedures that facilitate strategy execution so well conceived policies and operating procedures facilitate strategy execution in three ways and let's focus upon that by providing top down guidance regarding how things need to be done top down guidance one second by helping ensure consistency in how execution critical activities are performed discipline and consistency 
by promoting the creation of a work climate that facilitates good strategy execution. Work climate many a times is related to culture of the organization also. Now, let us see how policies and procedures facilitate good strategy execution in you know a pictorial representation. So, well conceived policy and procedures are you know uh, have three elements largely and I would be briefly el elaborating upon these three just after this. So, when we talk of provide top down guidance we just mentioned that. So, channel individual and group efforts along a strategy supportive path, align the actions and behavior of uh, company personnel with the requirements for good strategy execution and place limits on independent action and help overcome resistance to change also. So, you see you have to go for freedom, but within a particular kind of a space. Help enforce consistency in how strategy critical activities are performed. So, second element we talked about. So, there are two elements within that, that is improve the quality and reliability of strategy execution, help coordinate the strategy execution efforts of individuals and groups throughout the organization. It is an organization wide activity and you see despite of disciplines, functional areas in management, marketing, HR and OB, financial management, operations management and so on. Almost all the authors, they have talked about an organization wide perspective in terms of management of quality, in terms of you know measurement criteria, in terms of going ahead and so on and we would be also mentioning about one or two of those like TQM for example, which is which is largely you know an operations side perspective, but we are talking about internal operations management and then TQM traverses into almost everything as the author suggests even in accounting and finance more or less and human resource management specifically. So, uh, the third point as we know that promote the creation of work climate that facilitates good strategy ex execution. Let us slightly elaborate on these. So, to ensure consistency in product quality and service behavior patterns, McDonald's policy manual spells out detailed procedures that personnel in each McDonald's units are expected to observe. It is a large organization, thousands of outlets. For example, cooks must turn, never flip hamburgers. If they have not been purchased, Big Macs must be discarded in 10 minutes after being cooked and french fries in 7 minutes. You see specific you know frame has been defined that this is what is to be done to manage the quality basically and it should not deviate anywhere in this world. So, that a universal quality frame is uh, you know emphasized upon and customers should uh, know this and they should be known for this kind of a perspective and then whole of the world the taste and the quality should be similar and that is how they are managing this kind of a thing basically and that is why McDonald's is McDonald's. So, cashiers must make eye contact with and smile at every customer. I, I remember when you go to Japan you know they they are very very service oriented people many times and, and I, I commend you know Japanese organizations for that when you go there they are very specific in mannerism in culture and in how they attend to the customers and so on. Retail chain stores and other organizational chains example hotels, hospitals, child care centers similarly rely on detailed policies and procedures to ensure consistency in their operations and reliable service to their customers. Now, third point employing process management tools to drive continuous improvement in how value chain activities are performed process management tools. Let us see what we have in store. Company managers can significantly advance the cause of competent strategy execution by adopting best practices and using process management tools to drive continuous improvement, continuous improvement in how internal operations are conducted. That means, output should be improved every time, but the process has to be driven through continuous improvement and that is the mainstay. Let us see some, some uh, specific references to that. So, one of the most widely used methods for gauging how well a company is executing its strategy entails benchmarking the company's performance of a particular of particular activities and business processes against best in industry and best in the world performers. And when you become best in the world then what do you do? you upscale the benchmarks, you reach beyond 100 percent as they have started saying now, you live with that standard, you keep up for example, an athlete once he or she wins, then that is the point where they start uh, you know 
maintaining that level and they they start competing with themselves a cricketer when gets the highest score then after that they keep up the pace for you know they they keep on fighting with themselves and you know they keep on uh, you know competing with themselves it can also be useful to look at best in company performers of an activity if a company has a number of different organizational units performing much the same function at different locations a healthy competition within the organization upscaling the benchmarks looking at the best industry standards and creating your own benchmarks but as a student of strategy i always recommend that we should be focusing upon creating the best of the benchmarks for ourselves you see i i remember one example when tatas they constructed taj hotel taj in bombay i remember uh, you know one video clip wherein jamshed ji told his sons that it should be the best in his class now and he imagined what best can be there were very little benchmarks available in the world at that time and he went much beyond those basically when he developed established swadeshi mills in nagpur i remember uh, and i told you about that that was one of the best organizations you know cotton mills in whole of the world the kind of human resource policies which tatas they implemented in their organization they were one of the best in the world he imagined he said that men should work as men should basically you know but the point is intent was that people should live a life of dignity and the best as far as whatever they can get as far as the environment goes so that is where human resource policies and those kind of things they came up so you create world class benchmarks why why to go by the market standards or so on for example in educational institutions we always say that this institution is doing best but those are perception rankings and this is my personal view so every institution should start striving for you know competing with itself largely we should develop our own syllabi we should we should look at internal acumen we should we should not be focusing upon that this institution in the hierarchy is doing this way or this institution is doing that way we should be focusing upon that what best can be offered from our side how zealous and intense can we be and and you know extend those things to our students and that is how we would rise ultimately otherwise we may remain in the hierarchy somewhere somehow so that is where you know things are so then the other element is identifying analyzing and understanding how top performing companies or organizational units conduct particular value chain activities and business processes provide useful yardsticks for judging the effectiveness and efficiency of internal operations and setting performance standards for organizational units to meet or beat so here basically how top performing companies or organizational units conduct particular value chain activities so we focus upon how people do but then we can look upon our own value chain as far as the whole situation goes and this is largely the pictorial uh, demonstration and i will be elaborating upon these points uh, you know very briefly so engage in benchmarking to identify the best practice for performing an activity that is the first part then adapt the best practice to fit the company situation then implement it and so on continue to benchmark company performance the activity against best in industry or best in the world performance and become the best and keep up the pace or you may think the best way and start chasing that up front move closer to operating excellence and performing the activity and so on define the best for whole of this world rather than following the best actually so and how the process of identifying and incorporating best practices works so benchmarking is the backbone of process of identifying as authors have defined and i am referring to keller thompson strickland and gamble crafting and executing strategy the quest for competitive advantage mcgraw hill education so now when we say that benchmarking is the backbone of process of identifying studying and implementing best practices the role of benchmarking is to look outward to find best practices and to develop the data for measuring how well a company's own performance of an activity stacks up against the best practices standard however benchmarking is more complicated than simply identifying which companies are the best performance of an activity and then trying to imitate their approaches especially if these companies are in other industries that is why i said create your benchmarks think of how you can be the best in this world a company can make giant strides toward excellent strategy execution by adopting a best practice mindset and that is what precisely authors have also indicated 
and successfully implementing the use of best practices across more of its value chain activities. A semi-urban company, a rural company can be best in the world in their, in their realm if they know what their customer wants and how they should be doing that. I was talking to one of the doctors, you know, long back, my father, who was associated with, you know, managing health in Kumbh Mela, one of the largest congregations in the world. How did you do that? He said that we created the best possible methods and strategies to keep up the levels of hygiene and sanitation and, you know, serving people as far as whole of the scenario goes. And I am referring to 2001 Kumbh Mela of Allahabad. So, Allahabad 2001 uh, Kumbh Mela was one of the largest congregations in the world since the inception of this earth, basically, since inception of human resource on this earth. So, that is, that is the point. And, and you see, he created his best practices, what should be the best practices. And, and you know, and when we talk of Kumbh Mela, you all know that, you know, almost 30 million people at one point of time in almost 4,000 acres or so huge population, very small piece of land. The more the organizational units use best practices in performing their work, the, the closer a company moves towards performing its value chain activities more effectively and efficiently. This is what operational excellence is all about. Tools for promoting operating excellence, they are associated with, you know, largely, they are, uh, you know, classified largely in three forms, business process re-engineering, total quality management, Six Sigma quality control programs. And you see, there are several other tools, but largely authors have decided to demonstrate these three in a broader sense for us to understand. So, what is business process re-engineering? Companies searching for ways to improve their operations have, have sometimes discovered that the execution of strategic critical activities is hampered by a disconnected organizational arrangement, whereby pieces of an activity are performed in several different function departments with no one manager or group being accountable for optimal performance of entire activity, coherence is the message. To address the suboptimal performance problems, a company can re-engineer the work effort, pulling the pieces of an activity out of different departments and creating a single department or cross-functional work group to take charge of whole process. Integration, coherence, objective, focus and performance, all these things coming together. The use of cross-functional teams has been popularized by practice of business process re-engineering and I would, you know, suggest that you further dwell upon these. General Electric's created so many benchmarks as far as business, re business process re-engineering goes and you may refer to their website as well as the text which is being suggested here. Then there is TQM which is a comprehensive structured approach to management that emphasizes continuous improvement in all phases of operations, 100 percent accuracy in performing tasks, involvement and empowerment of employees at all levels, team based work design, benchmarking and total customer satisfaction. While TQM concentrates on producing quality goods and fully satisfying customer expectations, it achieves its biggest successes when it is extended to employee efforts in all the departments and that is what I was referring to human resource, billing, accounting, information systems and so on. TQM aims at instilling enthusiasm and commitment to doing things right from top to the bottom of the organization. Then there is Six Sigma. Six Sigma programs offer another way to drive continuous improvement in quality and strategy execution. This approach entails the use of advanced statistical methods to identify and remove the causes of defects errors and undesirable variability in performing an activity or business process. If you have structured that, you have structured that. When performance of an activity or uh, process reaches Six Sigma quality, there are no more than 3.4 defects per million iterations equal to 99.9997 percent accuracy. Now, the fourth point, installing information and operating systems that enable company personnel to carry out their strategic roles proficiently. What does that mean? It means, for example, Qantas, Ryanair, British Airways and other successful airlines cannot hope to provide passenger pleasing service without a user friendly online reservation system, an accurate and speedy baggage handling system and a strict aircraft maintenance program that minimizes problems requiring at the gate service that delay departures. I remember in my student life when I uh, you know, I, I was back home on vacations and I went back and lost my baggage. I would not name the airlines I traveled by 
and it was such a problem. I was there at home, uh, you know, and, uh, at my place in the country where I was studying and I had to go to university, I had to rejoin after vacations and I did not have many things to wear and, and somehow, you know, my friends were helping me, I did not have so many things which I was carrying back from home and so on and after few days, I got my luggage which was half, half I could not find, although the major luggage I could find, airlines did compensate me, definitely it did, but it was a huge problem. So, to avoid those kind of problems, company strategies cannot be executed well without a number of internal systems for business operations as the authors say and that is what these airlines they have been trying to do. Last point in the line, using rewards and incentives to promote better strategy execution and the achievement of a strategic and financial targets for managing internal operations well. What are those? It is essential that company personnel be enthusiastically committed to executing strategies successfully and achieving performance targets. Enlisting such commitment typically requires use of an assortment of motivational techniques and rewards. Ultimately, humans are to be motivated, Maslow's hierarchy has to work somewhere and you know two-factor theory also works here. An efficiently designed reward structure is the single most powerful tool management has for mobilizing employee commitment to successful strategy execution, reward structure. But incentives and rewards do more than just strengthen the resolve of a company personnel to succeed. They also focus employees' attention on the accomplishment of specific strategy execution objectives. Although it is a two-way sword many a times, it will work from the other side as well. So, a properly designed reward structure is management's single most powerful tool for mobilizing employee commitment to successful strategy execution, aligning efforts throughout the organization with strategic priorities. And you see, when, when, when we are talking of rewards, incentives and motivational practices that facilitate good strategy execution account for financial incentives and you know some, some other uh, forms of motivational uh, techniques and tools, environment also, culture also, but most successful companies and managers also make extensive use of non-monetary incentives as the authors say. Financial rewards provide high powered incentives when rewards are tied to specific outcomes and objectives and I talked about two factor theory. But you see, when, when we are using rewards for, for in terms of non-monetary, so some of the most important non-monetary approaches are providing attractive perks, giving awards and public recognition which is required at a different stage of life, relying on promotion from within whenever possible inviting and acting on ideas and suggestions from employees which is very important, creating a work atmosphere in which there is genuine caring and mutual respect among workers between management and employees and you see uh, an important thing that ultimately culture matters. Stating the strategic vision in inspirational terms, sharing information with employees, transparency is most important, providing a comfortable and attractive working environment. It is, is it human resource management I am talking about? Yes, it is. So, and we should strike the right balance between rewards and punishment as such also. As I said, it is a two-way kind of a thing. Basically, if it works, it may work from the other side as well. So, while most approaches to motivation, compensation and people management accentuate the positive, company also make it clear that lackadaisical or indifferent effort and subpar performance can result in negative consequences. But why should this situation come? This situation should not come. So, rewards should be linked to the right outcomes and rewards should come up naturally. People should not desire for the reward and work. People should work while intrinsically being motivated by themselves and the culture of the organization and the benchmarks established by the leadership actually and they should feel that they, they, they should love to work for that organization basically and reward should come from the side of the organization wherein peer group and the managers should say the, that this person should be rewarded because they are you know um, he or she has been work, working so intensely that it should be recognized somehow. I would be catching up back with you with lots of insights on strategy implementation and associating that with several other kinds of things which I would be using as you know contemporary discussions. I will be catching up back with you till then goodbye.